Flying has not always been my uh, favorite experience. During the two tours that I had in Vietnam, uh, I guess one of the most vivid experiences I had were with Army helicopters. And in three separate occasions, they were not necessarily good experiences. In one, the helicopter got shot down, which is not a good thing. In the second occasion, the helicopter crashed, which is not a good thing. And on the third thing, the helicopter just gave up the will to fly and crashed. Well, first of all, being in Vietnam was, uh, was a different experience to start off with. And being a ground soldier or an infantryman, was uh, I thought it was pretty tough. The first one occurred when uh, we were trying to get up to headquarters from the base camp where we were, and we were in a speaker ship. That is, it's a helicopter with speakers on the side. They used it for psyops warfare. They tried to get over an enemy position and begin to broadcast things in Vietnamese, urging them to surrender and all that. And uh, it, so we were in this helicopter, and we're flying over this artillery base camp that had just refused to fire artillery for us. We were trying to attack a hill. We thought there were VC all over it. And so we called for a fire mission, and they refused. And I couldn't curse or anything like that on the phone because uh, everybody could hear it. But I thought at the time, boy, these guys were really sorry people. And then I remember we were on the speaker ship. So I asked the guy to turn the speakers on as we flew over the artillery base camp. And I got the phone and I said these kind words. I said, you guys down there in artillery, we just requested artillery support and you refused us. You Hummers down there are a sorry group. You should be supporting us. We're the infantry. We're why you're here in Vietnam. And so I thought, boy, I got them now. I've showed them. And right after that, our helicopter engine stopped. The rotors began to rotate some, and we was called auto-rotation. They kept turning a little bit and slowed us down, but we crashed just forward of that artillery base about a half a mile. I wasn't worried about getting hurt or anybody else getting hurt. I was worried about those artillery guys coming out and policing us up. But we landed, and everybody got off the helicopter and checked it out, and we were all okay. So the moral of the story is don't cuss at people who are supporting you because you never know when it might turn around, it come back to haunt you. At this time, I was assigned to the 1st Infantry Division. One day it became necessary to fly out and see where the troops were and give them orientation and where to go next and all that. So we got in this helicopter and, and we were flying out there and we noticed off to the distance, off to our left flank, there was this OB-10, it was a spotter plane the Air Force used to, to guide in their fighters. And it was doing loop-to-loops all around and just showing off and everything, and all of a sudden, a machine gunner, an enemy machine gunner from the ground, put a burst of fire into, the, into this uh, Air Force plane, and it got shot up and it crashed right near us over there. And I turned to the pilot and I said, call for dust off. He said, no, it's the code. I said, what code? He said, it's the code. We have to try and rescue him. I said, well, we're not a dust off. We don't have anything to get him out or anything. He said, it's the code. And so we flew over to where this guy was down. And sure enough, there he was, and he was alive, and he was on the ground. So there was a little clearing, or what appeared to be, let me say that again, what appeared to be a clearing off to his left. Pilot told me, he said, if we get over there, we can lower down to this clearing, and you and the gunner can go get the guy, wait him, bring him back here, and I'll lift him out. I said, this is not a good idea. He said, don't worry about it. So we got over this little clearing, and he said, okay, everybody, start looking on the left and right. So we started down, I said, pilot, we're going to hit the trees on the left. He said, no, I'll move over to the right some. So he moved over the right some. And, and we started down some more to land. I said, pilot, I said, wait a minute, you don't understand this. I'm, I'm only a major, I understand that, but we're going to hit those trees. He said, be okay, it's the code, we got to try. And we hit. The blades clipped the trees right, and the helicopter went flat down and hit on the ground. And I thought, pilot, the code does not apply in all times. So we're on the ground and everything else, and we get out, the gunners get out and set up security, and the pilot radio, radios, radios a dust off to come and get us. So we're sitting there, and a short time later, no time at all, a dust off helicopter with a Red Cross on the side. It's got cables on either side so they can lower down and winch up the guy that's, uh, that's hurt. The pilot turns and said, which one of you go, want to go up first? I said, none of us, go get the pilot first. And so the helicopter lifted off, the dust off, went over, and in about 15 minutes they got him, no trouble at all. They winched him out, came back to us, and uh, the pilot of the dust off said, okay, get the first man ready. And now there were so 
three of us actually, uh, a gunner and uh, as I recall it, myself and the pilot. And I said, okay, take the gunner up. And they whipped him right up like that and he was up and gone. Came back and the pilot said, no, I go, it's my aircraft. I said, I outrank you, you go. And so they lifted him up and, uh, and so we went up and everything else. And as they got me up, one of the last things that happened is my hand got caught in the winch and just blood went everywhere. But they got us up, they got the pilot up, and he was okay, and that was the mission anyway, to get him out. And we got us all back and we were alive. But helicopters are not the best way to go, transportation-wise. One of my most memorable experiences in Vietnam occurred when I was assigned to the 3rd Battalion of the 503rd Infantry, and that's part of the 173rd Airborne Brigade. We were, had lifted off from uh, our base camp, uh, which was in Dao Chiang, uh, and as we were flying to, to the north, we were trying to find this enemy force, which, is, which was in the uh, Suikai Valley. As we were flying, uh, we started to spot them on the ground, and uh, we had some gunships close to us, but not near, and the battalion commander, one of the most outstanding officers I ever served with, uh, Colonel J.J. Clark, uh, said, okay, we're gonna check them out, we're gonna get the Air Force in here to clean them out, and all of a sudden, I heard an rifle fire, or machine gun fire, or both, as it were. And as I looked over the helicopter and looked down at the bottom, I was looking on the platform, on the base of the helicopter, the floor, and it looked like somebody was punching a hole up with a pencil through the floor. Over here from my left, all the way to the right it went. And as it went, it clipped the gunner on the left side, and he flumped over his uh, his machine gun. And it kept going, and the gun came back, and it, it knocked the pilot out. He was gone. So the only people that weren't wounded right then was the machine gun on the right and the co-pilot. And then on the third time, as we were trying to get out of there, the machine gun opened again, and right in front of me, sitting in the side seat, looking out of the helicopter, directing everything, was my commander. And you could see the bullets just chew up through his neck, and he just slumped over, and the pilot turned around and said, how's it about? Not the pilot, excuse me, the co-pilot. The uh, pilot's gone. He turned around, he said, what do we need to do? I said, we need to get to, a, to a, a mass hospital right now. The colonel is severely bad, hurt. And he flipped the thing over, and the heli... I gotta tell you this. The helicopter is just wobbling back and forth. It is all shot up. How we ever got to the hospital, I'll never know. And so this co-pilot took over and this thing is wobbling and drifting everywhere. And he did get us back to the MASH hospital, got him in there, got the pilot off, he did okay. Got the gunner that was wounded off on the left side, he did okay. They got my colonel in and he died on the operating table. Bad day, bad day, lost a good guy. Helicopter was demolished, they hauled it off, it was gone. Things to remember.